How well does a tankless water heater perform for a radiant floor system? Is it better than a boiler? I'm going to show you the pros and cons, but let me tell you this. The cons, there's only really one. The tankless water heater doesn't feature outdoor reset, which means that it will gear up the temperature output according to the, how cold it is outside. So if the temperature is dropping, it will actually rev up the temperature of the boiler or the tankless water heater so you don't get a big swing. Now you can overcome this by uh, putting the temperature up higher the day before that you think it's going to be cold on the tankless. So it's not a big deal. One of the pros is the tankless water heater is about one quarter to one sixth the cost of a boiler. So you're looking at $680 for this Takagi TH3M. Now this is the one that I use and I bought it at an inflated price from my distributor because I didn't know that it was actually a tankless water heater they're using because they said it was a boiler so I didn't know the model. So guys this one actually does work. It's a TH3M. Now this has great warranty as a 15 year warranty and 5 years parts. That is also a pro as most boilers only have a 10 year to a 12 year warranty. So a 15 year warranty and 5 year parts is really good for any boiler or tankless water heater. Now this uses uh, copper grade alloy for the heat exchanger and it uses commercial grade parts. So it's not a cheap unit. It's a really good unit. It's designed for something else, but this is actually designed for radiant floor heat. So make sure you find one that can do it. So I recommend this Takagi because I use it and for two years it's been running great. It's a low cost, uh, great unit. You can get parts. I mean, there's so many parts for this if you ever need to get parts. So that's one good thing too, is you want a unit that you can find parts on. There may be other units out there that are cheaper or different brand, but make sure you can get all the parts that you may have to replace. Even though it gives you a five year parts warranty and 15 year on the heat exchanger, you still want to be able to get some common parts if you do break it or if it does leak because, I mean, I don't know how long service will take to come out, but it's easier just to get the part and have some spares. So that's another thing, and I don't get no money from plugging them. It's just what I personally used and what I know that actually does work. So now let's look at the dedicated boilers for radiant floor heat. And let's find one that has the same output, 120,000 BTU, as that Takagi. But you can see that the price ranges go from 1900 to like 4000 5000 there's a wide range of prices and manufacturers. But uh, let's just pick one that uh, is 120,000 BTU like this one. So this one is uh, 2300 So almost four times the cost of the other one. Well, say three and a half. But you can see that this one has outdoor reset sensor built in. Um, it has everything else, a bypass as a heat exchanger. Um, 12 year warranty and only two years parts, one year labor. So the Takagi actually has better warranty than a dedicated boiler. Now, both of these are gonna be condensing and modulating uh, boilers and that's what you want so that they rev up the heat output and uh, they condense and extract all that stuff. I'll tell you about that later in the video, but um, so here's different ones. We'll look at different ones, see what the warranty is on them, and figure out uh, which is a better way. Now this one, high efficiency, 95% efficiency, I believe it is. Yep, 95%. Uh, that Takagi is actually 93, 94%. And this one is modulating just like the Takagi, but Takagi doesn't show what uh, ratio it is. But this warranty, we're going to figure out, let's see, uh, right here, warranty info, um, let's see, 10 years heat exchanger, 5 years parts. So that tankless one actually beats it by 5 years on a heat exchanger. So when people say, oh, a, a tankless water heater will not be able to do it, or it won't last as long the warranty, well right there, it has a better warranty than regular boilers. 
here's what the outside sounds like, the exhaust. You can hear it. Actually, you can't really hear it. You can hear the background noise of the car since it's in the morning, it's rush hour. But we'll try to get close enough to see if you can hear it. So this is pretty quiet. Now we'll go on the inside, check out the inside. Now this is running. It's not on mute as you can hear me sigh. Now this zone has 12 loops, so about 3,500 feet of half inch pecs. Running about 88 degrees for inlet temperature and our um, return temperature is going to be about 70 degrees, so a delta T of about 18 degrees. This zone has 4 loops, so about 1,200 feet of pecs running the same 88 degrees and about 70 degrees return temp so 18 degree delta T. These pictures show my inlet and outlet temperature on my smaller zone when that zone is the only one running. So the temperature is next to 6 degrees and let's see what temperature is in here. Kind of dirty but let's see Okay, we're at 55 degrees. Let's see if you can see that better. 55 degrees. Let's see what this other side has. This other side is at 56 degrees. Let's see what the slab temperature is. I got a lot of products going on. I made that little rolling metal bench, but let's see what slab temperature is. So 62 degrees. So we're talking about uh, right now it's running seven degrees warmer. My slab. So when it gets cold like this, negative six, your slab temperature is going to run higher than your actual temperature. But then there's a stretch of 32 degree weather coming up and this thing will not run for three days through that because it basically gets charged up, this thermal mass gets charged up and it'll give off the heat. But right here we're looking at 90 degrees and about 70, say 4 degrees. So a delta T of uh, 16, delta T is the difference between the hot and cold coming back so um, you want that at between like 15 to 20 according to everything online so that you get the best uh, condensation condensing for condensing efficiency for boilers because then it can get that heat extracted from the exhaust so guys hopefully this helps you out and um, yes tankless water heaters can work because this building is 3200 square feet and I'm running 4,700 feet of tubing since it's a thermal mass. So if my building can do that, if you're running less than 4,700 feet of tubing, then your system should be able to do it. I would recommend putting a window in the wall. This is a 4x8, but gives it a more open feel instead of a solid wall. Also, you can look at one side to the other side. You can look at your machines, or if you have people working for you, you can check in on them. But it just gives a more open, airy feel to it. So guys, I hope this helps you out and gives you some tips and ideas for your build. And as always, th thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe.